Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, a surprise Nintendo Direct throws our carefully curated plans into chaos! It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with ya. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined as I always am by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, I know what listeners are thinking. They're yeah. like, wait a second. Yeah. We're supposed to be having a good old-fashioned Nintendo job swap right now. Right. We're gonna be we were gonna be doing like a classic goof around, right? And don't fear the goofery will happen in the future, I am sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, next week, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but because... when a surprise Nintendo Direct yes. knocks. Who are we to not answer? You you got to answer. I mean, maybe you like open the door a little bit so that like the little chain catches it and you're like, who you is it? You check first. You check you first. You make sure it's not one of those course. PlayStation, you know, like no. Nintendo Direct wannabes. What are they called? The I PlayStation? Know, state of Plays. State of Play is correct. You said, I don't know. And then you were like, here's the exact branding. Well, I hate myself for knowing it. <laughs> How you doing, Mark? Doing good. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure if we were starting this over again. No. <laughs> no yeah. Oh, yeah. That's an edit point. We're not, <laughs> none of that's going to be included. Um, I'm in a weird headspace. I have watched this Nintendo Direct now three times in the last couple hours. Uh, it's a lot. Because I, if people want to see your live reactions to the Nintendo Direct. That's right. I joined the uh, fellows from the Unranked podcast to uh, uh, live react to this thing with them. Uh, and you can check that out on the Unranked uh, Twitch channel, which I don't know what that is. But, uh, it's go probably to, easy to find. Yeah, go Those to, things are. Go to Twitch and type in Unranked. Or go to Google and type in Twitch Unranked Nintendo Direct with Patrick Ellers. And you'll find it. I guarantee it. Um, here's something that's much easier to find my copy of Sonic Forces. You can borrow it. It's brutally easy to find it's it. It's so easy to find. You will walk to your mailbox one day to do something else, to get like a bill. You'll just be minding your own business. Yeah, your own business. And suddenly, Sonic the Hedgehog will make it his business. And you'll be like, what did I do to deserve this? But I'll tell you what you did. That's you right. You sent your mailing address. Right. To our email address, which is Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail I send you my copy of Sonic Forces for the Nintendo Switch. You play it for as long as you want. You send it back. I've already paid for postage. Crazy. It costs you what? Nothing. Nothing. Something that else you can do that costs you nothing, but we get some enjoyment out of, is uh, you can send us your Super Mario Maker 2 levels. Yeah, we really, we actually enjoy that. We do. In fact, we've made uh, a semi-tradition of it, of uh, playing through them. When Mark comes over to record, we're like, oh, hey, we've got some new levels. Let's knock them out. This tradition can only continue yes. if you send us your levels. And look, you wouldn't want to be responsible for breaking a tradition, You'd would you? would be like killing Christmas. It'd be like the year without a Santa Claus all over again. Right. Is this the second week in a row we've brought up a year without a Santa Claus? Let's keep it going, baby. Let's it's another it. tradition. <laughs> Let's get a hot streak going. Oh, that heat miser. <laughs> um, all right. There's a big Nintendo Direct for us to talk about. So let's just get right into it. <laughs> 40 minutes, 4-0. Four there's a lot going on in this direct. I actually felt anxiety watching it. Yeah. I, we got to the point where they talk about Animal Crossing, and I legitimately was feeling stressed out because I'm like, I don't have enough time to play these games. Right, right, There right. are so many games, and they all want so much of my time. And so many of them launched today. Yeah. Well, and like, you know, one of them that's like a weird little footnote in the direct is The Witcher. <laughs> Like, uh, that's yes. been a footnote in two directs now. At this that's point. a good. That's a good point. That's a good point. But I mean, like, that's a game that's gonna uh, swallow uh, tens or hundreds of hours if we choose to play it. Every time that they were like, and it includes all single player DLC, which they did multiple times. I yes. like swallowed really hard. Yeah, I mean, the game immediately after uh, The Witcher was two Assassin's Creed <laughs> games in one package, and all of their DLC, and all their DLC. It's a lot. There are a lot of games here. Yeah. 
Um, you want to approach this thing uh, just chronologically, just right down the middle. I think we should, so that way we don't leave out anything we maybe want to talk about. That's right. Um, so it's, it started with uh, something that we had discussed on Tuesday and have maybe been sort of whispering about for a couple of weeks. It's Overwatch is coming to the Switch. That's right. They didn't try to bury it later. They were just like, hey, no. guess what? Overwatch coming in October. Get out in front of it um i mean it's overwatch Mm -hmm. um they said new ways to play um and then it looked like they were showing off some like tilt controls but only to control uh junk rats rip tire move which is where like he sends out he either sends it out or like he's in the tire Uh uh-huh and it just sort of like uh careens around and like plows into people so you can do that with tilt controls i don't know if there's going to be any other tilt controls in this game maybe it'll just be like uh gyro assisted aiming yeah which would be great like the splatoon style or like breath of the wild style i'm unclear i don't think they ever brought it up i i'm assuming this is not like cross play I would think not. Yeah, okay. Um, which is actually uh, good. One of the reasons I don't play Overwatch now, I, you know, I bought it on um, PlayStation when it came out, um, but one of the reasons that I stopped playing it was people got good at it, and uh, that's not something I do with shooters. <laughs> well, it's not just that they got good, but they got mean. <laughs> no, it was, just about, it was just about them getting good. I, it doesn't matter to me if people are mean. <laughs> it's that they were mean and could back it up. Uh-huh. Um, but this is going to be a whole new player base. Uh, cool. And, you know, also there'll be some uh, experts popping in too. But uh, the game comes out on October 15th of this year, which is soon. Yeah, very soon. Uh, next, we saw a little bit more about Luigi's Mansion 3, including some new floors uh-huh. in the Haunted Hotel. Oh, we got the mezzanine. We got Castle McFright. We got Garden Suites. Tomb Suites, uh, which is like the, the Egypt uh, pyramid. It's like the Luxor. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and then we got the dance party and Spectral Crash, which is a pirate-themed restaurant I inside love it. the hotel. I assume it's like Pirate Adventure down in Buena Park, right by Medieval Times. Oh, that's interesting. I was thinking of it more like the uh, Blue Bayou mm, at Disneyland. I would love that. I mean, this whole game is feeling very amusement park-esque to me. Um, like, it already felt like Haunted Mansion um, mm-hmm. at Disneyland and Disney World. And now that's got like a and little And a little bit of, ti- uh, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Little Twilight Zone Tower of Terror and a little bit now Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, give me... I, I can... This comes out on what? Halloween? Yep. Um, I'm very excited for this game. Everything they show, it just looks like cuter and more like well realized. Uh, I'm very excited for this. They also showed off a new competitive multiplayer mode called Scream Park. Yes, two to eight players. Um, four Louis up to four Luigi's versus up to four Gooigi's. It looks like chaos. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's kind of hard to tell from the footage they showed whether it's like a bunch of like everyone's on screen at once, right? So it's probably going to. F- even if they're not like mini games, feel more like Mario Party style mini games. Um, so, like, you know, it'll be a fun little like add on thing to what is already going to be, um, you know, a pretty cool uh, full game. Uh, next up uh, is Super Kirby Clash, um, which is a new free to start uh, Kirby game that is available on your Nintendo Switch right now. Um, and the way it works, it's like a. Uh, uh, a, a just fighting kind of a fighting game like a boss rush uh, game where you play as one Kirby and you either have uh, human or computer controlled allies who are other Kirby's who are uh, just fighting the bosses yeah but you don't have like the full at least from the little bit I played yeah because uh, it's available right now you uh, you don't have like the full Kirby suite of abilities like i don't think you can like suck things in and yeah, stuff like you, that you, what the so like the way that you suck in new abilities is by um changing your character's class and equipping them with different weapons which you spend like the game's in-game currency on um at like a little shop between the fights um and there are also these like uh diamond apples or crystal apples or something and they uh when you use them then they can't be used again for another like 12 hours or something and i'm sure there's a way to circumvent that 12 hour time limit with real world money and there's also like a stamina meter yeah yeah i mean this is basically a it's mobile game monetization in a switch game which you know your mileage will vary on how much you you find that interesting but also just like 
you know, this falls in the great tradition of uh, Kirby games on the 3DS that uh, have like a very limited uh, gameplay style and uh, I feel like must have a limited audience, but they keep putting them out. Yeah, I think it's interesting too, because on the 3DS, did we ever have one of these free to start Kirby games? Or yeah. Oh, couple. we did. Um, yeah, th- there was the one that was like the uh, overhead, uh, like four player simultaneous. Um, I, I forget what that game was called. And then there was another one that was a little bit more brawly, like that they I, came, I, I remember that. Yeah, they both came out of like game modes in uh, Planet Robobot. Right. Um, and I don't know if they were just like, oh, we got something here. Um, so, I mean, that's, uh, again, this kind of goes along with the idea that we are in the year of the Switch as handheld um, because we are seeing these sort of like offshoot Kirby games you know, in addition to mm-hmm. your box boys and your fire emblems and Pokemon and stuff. The thing I like about these sorts of games is like, is just, it's easy to try them out. Just check it out, see what it is. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I played uh, two fights. Mark, you played like one fight. I'll probably dip back into it, like just to see if the fights get like more interesting. It's pretty like button mashy, mm-hmm. right? Um, like you can get to a point where like, yeah, maybe you should jump over and like attack the enemy from behind. Or who cares, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I also assume that with a lot of these free-to-start games, it scales pretty yeah. heavily. Yeah. So, like, you're going along, you're doing fine, and then all of a sudden... It wants your money. Exactly. Um, this is... Uh, you can play it uh, couch co-op, local multiplayer on multiple Switches or online. And again, it is available now. Next up, they showed a little bit more of Trials of Mana, the Trials of Mana remake that was announced at the E3 Direct. Yeah. So this is a remake of the game that previously had never come to the West before, but is now available in the uh, Mana Collection. collection yeah. Collection of Mana. I, I I think it is called the Mana Collection, but Collection of Mana makes more sense as that's the naming convention. Legend of Mana, mm-hmm. Secret of Mana, Trials of Mana. Um, one of the things that they bragged about here is that the characters have full range of movement, including jumping and combo attacks. So... There you go. The trailer for this one looked a little bit. They like showed off some of like the cinematics or what I perceive to be cinematics, and the character design is a little like cheesecakey for me. Well, the Secret of Mana remake that came out for the PS4 last year was not exactly met super enthusiastically. So. Yeah. Um, and the voice acting seemed really crummy in this too. So I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't really have high hopes. Yeah. But I'm. Gl- I think it's cool that Trials of Mana is now available in the collection of mana or mana collection yeah totally and this is coming out april 24th 2020 um next we got a trailer for the return of Oberdeen, which is a game that's been i think just uh on uh pc before now right yeah um, i'm not sure if it's been on consoles yet so it's got a like really uh really graphic art style that is um just like black on white um it looks like you're looking through a game boy camera mm-hmm. um if you remember the game boy camera um and you are it's like a first person uh sort of detective game where you are investigating the mystery of a ship that sank um and there's some sort of like supernatural element yeah you can like turn back time and see like what different people on the ship were experiencing it's from the creator of papers please okay yeah which cool it, um an indie game that i have never played myself but have read a lot about and heard a lot about and i know it's well regarded i think this game was really well regarded as well both of them strike me as games that I'm more interested in learning about than actually playing. Yeah. I mean, depending on the price point, like this may be a cool one to, to jump into. Um, and it is coming fall this year. And I think it's cool it's coming to Switch. Yeah, yeah totally. And then so next we saw Game Freak's RPG project that's not Pokemon that previously was known as Town is now known as Little Town Hero. How do you, do you think that is an upgrade or a downgrade in, in the title department? I think it's an upgrade. I think it's pretty hard to go down from town town is tough because i want there to be either a definite or indefinite article probably definite i want it to be the town which is just that ben affleck movie (laughs) um yeah so this is a an rpg that is based around the idea that you never leave the town um they said that in the trailer never leave the town Mm -hmm. as though that is like the mantra um, because there are all these like monsters around. I've uh, seen the village. Yes, it's just look. There's the, there's that like uh, porcupine monster it's thing. Chibi the village, the <laughs> RPG. I get what this game is. That's right. Um, 
your hero's name is Axe. Um, it, the trailer says that his weapons are ideas. Uh, so you have to decide. You have to be like very strategic about which uh, ideas you pick to fight the uh, monsters. One of the things that I found really interesting is like. Uh, this is dealing in some incredibly small numbers. You know, usually you'll start like an RPG and like your character has like 50 hit points. And they're dealing like uh, 20 points of damage mm -hmm. or something. This like you could see that Axe had three hit points, right? <laughs> and like that he's fighting someone and he deals two points of damage. And it's like, okay, very small numbers here, which means that every number means a lot. Um, so you, I think that means that the, uh, like strategy part of it is probably a little bit more strict and that you've got to really know what you're doing in order to defeat these monsters. The other part that I thought was really interesting was Undertale creator Toby Fox is composing almost all the music for almost the game. Almost all the music. Not all of it. Mm -hmm. Almost all the music. I guess I, uh, this reminded me of, it. this was a surprise to me just because I didn't think the Game Freak would necessarily go outside and go to a... Uh, like indie developer of a super well regarded game, yeah. But to score one of their one of their new titles, but it kind of reminded me of uh, the Nine Inch Nails guys doing the new music for the Pixar Soul movie that's coming out next year. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Trent Reznor's been uh, scoring movies for a while, but usually they sound kind of spooky, right? Like a David Fincher movie or yeah. something. It's it's crazy to me that they got him to do a Pixar movie. <laughs> it's him, and what is the guy who writes it with it? Uh, uh, I wanted yeah. to say Atticus Finch, but that is from... Um, no, but I think Atticus is right, yeah. and then you took Finch from... Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird. Well, right. <laughs> but also you said David Fincher before. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Uh, Atticus Ross? Possibly. Possibly. But, it, but I don't know what to make of this game. It feels like... It's coming out at a weird time. We haven't talked about that yet. October 16th, which is so soon. Yeah. Um, we had like the weird little tease of this game when we thought it was uh, called Town. Um, and then we were like, oh, okay, well, but obviously Game Freak is, you know, they're working on Pokemon. They got a jam to get that thing out. And like, no, this is coming out before Pokemon. Well, and we talked about uh, probably like a month or two ago on one of the news episodes how Game Freak is really trying to diversify outside of Pokemon yeah. and how they have two teams one who's focused pretty much on Pokemon and the other team who does like these interesting side projects and that the teams like commingle and mix around. But um, does this feel that different from Pokemon? I don't, to me, it, I don't know. I really don't know what to make of this. I, I guess when it was announced, that it was like a game, a new RPG from Game Freak that I expected. I don't know what I expected just to be there more like hype or whatever around it. But I don't know why, because none of Game Freak's other titles really ever have yeah, they're all much like, like thunder. Small, like low profile things. Yeah. So it's definitely one to keep an eye on, but I I just really don't know oh, like who it's for or how it plays or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I got almost vibes of uh Quest sixty four from it. Like, do you remember that game on the... It, I never played it. I, I know it by reputation more than yeah. anything. I mean, I'm, I can only assume that this is not going to be as bad as Quest 64, but, like, it's got a little bit of the same, like, smaller scale, kind of, like, cutesy, um, like, close camera, turn-based RPG. Um, and hopefully it's uh, not as bad as, uh, as Quest 64. Which is famously bad, I Famously. Believe. Okay, and then moving on to Smash Brothers Ultimate DLC news. There's a lot of Smash Brothers Ultimate DLC news. Yeah, remember it felt like for a while that it was such a precious currency, being like, Ooh, "Oh yeah, who are the new characters going to be?" Ooh, dri yeah, just drips and drabs. We Not just anymore. Need any anything we can get. Sakurai turned on the faucet and was like, "Drink it." Well, so okay, there are a couple of annou announcements here, and then after. Um, Sakurai did like a 35 minute video where he just talked about, uh, he just like expanded on all of this. Um, I don't believe that you've had an opportunity to no. uh, watch that. Mark, I did. I watched it <laughs> twice. <laughs> I'm so glad you laid down on the tracks for that because I don't know that I care enough to watch it. Here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and recommend watching it because Masahiro Sakurai is 
so over like caring about how he's presenting himself in these things he talks for maybe three minutes about how he's controlling both characters on the screen with uh uh pro controllers and that he's like i used to stack them vertically when i did this with gamecube controllers but when i do this with pro controllers i accidentally hit l and r on the bottom controller now i do them side by side <laughs> and this goes on for like three minutes it's incredible do you remember that time when he did like a really long blink <laughs> yes yes this video is like one 38 minute long okay. blink you sold me on it um so let's let's try to go through what what this news is um so the first is that uh challenger pack three which features banjo kazooie uh is out today crazy uh so you can start you can download that and play it right now if you bought the uh fighter pack um back in the day or if you want to spend 5.99 to pick it up now uh you can um so in the video with uh sakurai sort of explaining how all this works he did a cute little like explaining um the history of banjo kazooie as, as a franchise uh and then like made special mention of like uh, it, it might be a little bit weird because this character is owned by Microsoft. Um, and if you want to play more Banjo-Kazooie games, you can. You just got to do it on Xbox, <laughs> which is just too, like, I don't know. I love this guy. Um, and like everyone else in the room is like laughing as he says this. Uh -huh. It's just super charming. Um, they went through, there are uh, 10 tracks uh, in, from Banjo-Kazooie that are in Smash Brothers. They uh, did, seven of them are, are remixes to sort of like fit the uh, like speed and aggression of Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. um, the level is Spiral Mountain, which we know, um, and the new arrangement of the music is done by Grant Kirkhope, who did the original music. Very cool. Um, yeah, and is like a legendary um, game composer. He is evidently the first American or just a non-Japanese composer that Sakurai worked with, uh, which is uh, cool and novel. There are cameo characters uh, all around Spiral Mountain uh, from the uh, Banjo-Kazooie franchise. Uh, and then we also got uh, more information about the version 5.0 update, which comes with the... Um, the challenger pack number three uh which is the return of home run mode um and uh the feature now that when you download someone else's me fighter you can customize their move set uh used to be that if you downloaded a me fighter you also downloaded their move set and that was the end of it um and then we got some more me fighter costumes why how uh, I mean, people must be buying these. Someone right? must, yeah. Again, they're seventy-five cents a piece. Um, we saw Goemon from the uh, Legend of the Mystical Ninja series, Proto Man from Mega Man, Zero from Mega Man X, um, Team Rocket from Pokemon, and kind of fun, kind of fun, um, and then San from Undertale, that little like uh, skeleton guy. That's cool. Um, which includes a new like remix music track of Undertale music arranged by Toby Fox. <laughs> The word on everybody's lips is going to be Toby. Toby <laughs> oh. uh, I, and then uh, is that the only way you can get that music track is if you buy? Yes. Mm, um, tricky. And then uh, Sakurai also showed off the new um, Amiibo that are coming out on the 20th Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Solid Snake. And then... That was just for Banjo Kazooie. That yes. was just for the update that's already here. Yes. Then we got a really cool trailer. Super cool trailer. Uh, for showing a bunch of 16-bit Fatal Fury characters. Yep. Going after a Smash invite that's yep. you know in like 16 bits. And then who is this guy? Uh, Terry uh, uh, Bogard. 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 Um, yeah, he's uh he's like the main character of the Fatal Fury uh series. And he's coming to Smash. This is the SNK character. It is. That uh, we talked about on Tuesday. Um, it was pretty cool the way they um, introduced this because, uh, like, the, the trailer itself was neat. But it also started with, like, uh, it started, like, with a camera focus on Nintendo Switch. And then, like, back in time through, like, a timeline of all these Nintendo um, consoles and handhelds. The Virtual Boy was in there. I was very excited about the Virtual Boy being in there. And then it stopped on the uh, Super Nintendo, uh, which is at 1991, and then pans over to a Neo Geo that's sitting right there. Um, it was really fun. It, it was it was really cool. Um, and in the Sakurai video that followed the Direct, um, they showed off uh, a little in-game footage, uh, which 
Uh, looked like maybe we were in a Fatal Fury themed arena, and some of the Fatal Fury characters were in the background. Um, but uh, you know, it was like he throws two punches, and like that's the end. Right. Of I wonder if it'll be like a hero situation where we get uh, different skins for the Fatal Fury character. Oh yeah, I don't know. But I guess probably not they, because they, they have they different play moves different sets. enough. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, and then they also announced that yes, after Terry. There's one more uh, DLC character planned in the current DLC. Right. Or so you think. Or so you think. <laughs> well, no. I mean, that's the last one in the Battle that's Pass. Right. That's right. But fear not. There's going to be more DLC characters. I feel like this was... And is, this, it almost seems like obvious, right? This announcement almost seems obvious. Um, but it feels like the Megaton announcement in, in this Direct. That, like, they, they are going to keep adding characters to this game. And I'm like, yeah. Like, just, just do it. I know. Okay, so when this was happening, I was like, the, I was ready to say the words. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to buy these second characters. You know, I haven't put that much time into the new ones. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a lie. Yeah. Of course I'm going to buy Of them. course you're going to buy the new ones. <laughs> What are you not going to, you know, I can't even think of who the other character, Tracer. Let's say we get Tracer from Overwatch. Winston. What about Winston from Overwatch? He's a gorilla who wears glasses. <laughs> He's blue. <laughs> There's just so many, so many possibilities. Um, in the, in Sakurai's video afterwards, he said that he doubts there will, uh, he doubts that um, another, it, if the Smash series continues and like they put out another game um, after Ultimate, he doubts that they will ever be able to put all these characters in there again. So like, he's just making hay while the sun shines at, at, at this point. That's amazing. I mean, I love that it truly is the Ultimate Smash Brothers game. Totally. Um, a friend of the show, June, is speculating that Smash Brothers just basically becomes a service, like Overwatch or Fortnite or whatever, where they're just introducing new characters all the time and it just continues into perpetuity. The one thing I wonder is, like, there's so many licensing rules yeah. around these characters that there has to be a sunset on some of this, right? I mean, so, or not would necessarily. Assume. Like, if, if there may not be a sunset if they never release another Smash Brothers game. They but, may have, like, got the license for those characters to distribute those characters in this game forever. Sure. I, I, I guess I suppose that's possible. But that would be nuts. It, it would be. Yeah. Especially if they were, like, doing it knowing that they'll never stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Sony with, like, the Spider-Man rights. Like, as long as they release a Spider-Man movie once every two years, right? they are able to, like, keep the rights forever and ever. Maybe that's the deal Nintendo made with SNK. You remember how, uh, like, Fox was doing that with the uh, Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four? And they, like, made that really, really crappy one because they were just like, oh, man, we need to... Like, it's never going to go anywhere. Yeah. It, we're never going to release it. Uh, but we just have to make a Fantastic Four movie. So weird. Then we got a little bit about Zelda's Link's Awakening. Yep. Zelda Link's Awakening. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening <laughs> remake for the Nintendo Switch. I think I put a couple extra S's in there. <laughs> um, comes out on September 20th. They didn't really have anything particularly new to say. No. I mean, other than sort of confirming the obvious that the... Um, Link Amiibo is uh, coming out the same day. Um, and that the uh, Chamber Dungeons, uh, so those are the like uh, dungeons that you design yourself, um, can be saved to uh, Zelda-themed Amiibos. So you can uh, you know, bring them to your friend's house and uh, have them scan and play those dungeons. Uh, so d I guess, does that mean that you won't be able to share them online at all? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Possibly, uh, possibly. And then we saw a little bit more about Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition, Thank also you. for the Nintendo Switch, <laughs> coming out one week later than Zelda on September 27th. Um, again, not a lot that we didn't really know before. Yeah. You can switch between the full re uh, like resolution or whatever and then the 16-bit mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are new character-based stories, and the free DLC, the Champions Pack, is available the same day. I don't really know why that why it's DLC then. Um, I think if you buy Dragon Quest Eleven now on other platforms, it Say also... Say it. No, no, no. Say it. That's it. Drag oh, I, oh, on other platforms. On other Darn platforms. It. If you buy it Darn now. Darn it. I, I will. I didn't Darn say it. Echoes of an Elusive Age. <laughs> That's still part of the subtitle. Um 
that the champions pack comes with it. It's just like some extra costumes mm-hmm. and like consumable items. So like if you need, you know, eight more potions, like you got them. Right. Uh, then here comes a surprise. Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE is coming to Switch. I'm so excited. This is a game that was originally a Wii U game that mashed up the Shimigami Tensei uh, universe and the Fire Emblem universe it, into some sort of like turn-based idle RPG. It's very strange. Yeah, the history of this game is that it was announced um, probably like around the time the Wii U was revealed as a Shimigami Tensei and Fire Emblem like crossover title. Yeah. And then we heard nothing about it. So people's imaginations ran wild, right? Yeah. Is like it two a, beloved it, RP, JRPG mm-hmm. series? And like, is it a uh, turn based strategy game? Is it, you, what is it? And then it becomes this like, it, everyone is a pop idol and like trying to succeed in show business. And then like, he, the Fire Emblem characters come from a parallel universe to like fight demons that are trying to suck people's talent out of them <laughs> so i've never played this game before no but this i have listened to the soundtrack and the soundtrack is so much fun yeah if you like j-pop slaps <laughs> dare i say <laughs> like a tanuki to its belly oh yeah <laughs> um i'm really excited to play this game yes i <laughs> and best of all it comes with a new song, folks. Yep. Features a new song, not in the original game. Also, the characters will join you in battle for the first time. How can that be true? <laughs> what? I don't know, because I know basically nothing about this game. Nothing about this game makes sense, but I've only heard good things. Uh, one thing that I will say is a little bit of a bummer um, is that like it doesn't appear to be updated with any new Fire Emblem characters. Uh, I feel like the... Uh, the appetite for Fire Emblem Three Houses is so uh, so voracious right now that like people would eat it up if you just put like Claude Edelgard and Dimitri in totally. the game and Byleth, then like people would just devour it. But it, it may be enough anyway. I mean, they were definitely playing up like the Fire Emblem yes. connection. Like when they were revealing it, they were like Fire Emblem. I can't remember what it was, but it's like Fire Emblem something in Tokyo. Yeah. Uh, Which is, uh, they have to do because the name of the game, again, is Tokyo Mirage <laughs> Sessions Sharp F-E. And I'm saying sharp because I know that that's how, it, how it's pronounced, but it's like a hashtag. It's yeah, the it's number like the sign. pound sign. Right, exactly. I, but, you know, they're using the musical notation here, mm-hmm. Sharp F-E. Uh, and it's the uh, encore is, is the name of the game. I also think that they know, um, right, a, a rising tide lifts all boats. Yes. Because... It doesn't come out till January 17th, 2020, but you can buy it today. 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 <laughs> so they must know that people are high on Fire Emblem, uh-huh. and they're like, well, this looks insane, because yep. it does, but it's related to Fire Emblem, so let me pre-purchase it. Yep. Well, the iron is hot, baby. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, but I also wonder if that is partly why they didn't get any of these uh, Three Houses characters into it, because... This game must have been done like this. Uh, the encore edition must have been done for a while. Yeah, if you can already like. I'm because assu- you. There's no way on the eShop to pre-purchase something and not preload it. So I think it has to be a preload at this point. Or that's, maybe this th- is something that's different. That's interesting. I, I, I don't know if, if, if that's... But, I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, the, the original came out a couple of years ago at this point. Um, and it seems like the only thing that's new in this one is that it has a new song. <laughs> um, but this is cool. I like that uh, we're taking now, like, the list of Wii U games that are not on Switch uh, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and this was just one of the big uh, dominoes that had yet to fall. But some pretty glaring omissions still. Like no Super Mario 3D World. That's that's the biggest one. Also, no like Wonderful 101. No Pikmin 3. Um, so like there there are others that can come down the uh, the pipe at some point. Um, but this is a big one. Then next, uh, maybe a weird shift into something I don't know that I care about. Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise. Yeah, I don't care about uh, this. Sequel to Deadly Premonition, which is also coming to the Switch under the name Deadly Premonition's Origins. Um, that's available right now, and the new one is available in 2020. It looks like kind of a spooky uh, detective-y game. I don't really... I have anything else to say yeah. about that one. Uh, then we also found out the Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition is 
also available on Nintendo Switch today. Yes, and uh, you know this game has been around for kind of a while. I did. I, I've heard it. I heard the name a bunch. Uh, did not picture that it was going to look the way it looks. It looks kind of like a Diablo ish totally. uh, M- MMO. Um, it, it, the Switch version will feature cross save with Steam, and like you said, it's available today. So this was the title that. I feel like there's like this, there's Overwatch. There are so many like big third-party games that you can use Nintendo Switch Online for. Yeah. That it just got me thinking like, I don't know, for whatever reason, when it was just Nintendo's first-party games that were doing online, and it kind of had weird online limitations, you just kind of forgave it because you're like, well, who do I really want to talk to yeah. when I'm playing Mario Kart? online but if you're going to coordinate for like a diablo-esque mmo rpg like you're gonna need voice chat yeah right? like as more and more of these big third-party titles that you can play online with friends like warframe like all that kind of stuff become available and i guess i, I actually don't really remember how it shook out but fortnite for a while had like a voice chat i think it still does like built into it yeah. so maybe these other games do as well but um, it does feel like a, kind of like a glaring omission to me. Yeah, totally. That that they didn't like go back into it and say like, hey, by the way, we now support in-game voice chat for like every... Like, that, I guess that's just the, the limitations of like yeah. Nintendo Switch Online just become more apparent when you're dealing with these titles that require more like coordination. Yeah, I mean, especially... Um, yeah, it'll just be interesting to see like if people are using it. Like, are people really going to be playing um, Overwatch on Switch when uh, you know it will run into like disconnection issues and they were not going to be able to chat with their friends? Um, I could see these kind of games like just sort of quietly going away from the service too. So I don't know. Um, next up, we saw a fun little video from Bethesda um, introduced by Pete Hines being like, hey, uh, we make Doom. You like Doom. Remember Doom 64? It's coming to Switch. This was the a uh, few weeks ago when Bethesda uh, revealed that the original Doom, Doom 2, Doom two and, and Doom 3 yeah. right, had, were all coming to Switch. People were like, where's Doom 64? I love Doom 64. Here it is coming. Very soon, November twenty second. Mm-hmm. Um, and next we got saw a uh, a new game, new uh, new IP, uh, Rogue Company, um, which is an objective va- uh, objective based multiplayer game where you're like running around shooting stuff and like your tough commandos parachuting onto a boat or something. It comes out next year. I don't really have anything to say about it. Hey. Neither do I. Next, we saw Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is still due out in November. This game is so cute. This game gets cuter and more charming every time we see it. Um, They said, here, we're going to tell you four things about this game. Thing number one, character customization. You can do a bunch of it now. Yeah, there's been, you know, some of this in previous games. Uh, Like, I'm from Sword and... Excuse me. From Sun and Moon, you Mm -hmm. could get, like, haircuts and change your hair color and eye color and all that kind of stuff. But and even in P- Pokemon Let's Go, there was different outfits that yeah. you could try on. But this seems to be taking it to a whole new level. Yeah. So the, you know they they pointed out that like in, in the past when you're picking out your outfit, it's sort of just like pick your top, pick pick your bottom, and then you're done. Uh, these outfits include shirts, jackets, pants, dresses, socks, shoes, backpacks, hats, glasses, gloves. It's it, a lot. Yeah, and I I really think that the game looks good like even yeah. compared to let's go i think it's a good looking game yeah i think so too um and of course you can uh, change your hairstyles and put on makeup uh feature number two that they showed off was pokemon camp yes it's like a tent that you can set up pretty much anywhere in the wildlands and you can play with your pokemon you can invite people to play with your pokemon it seems like the wildlands is going to be the like multiplayer online area yeah, I mean, remember in what was it called in Sun and Moon when you could like do the thing where you like clean your Pokemon? Oh, right. Remember, yeah. like a- after a battle, it would be like, oh, it's wet, and you're like, oh, I'll get the <laughs> hair dryer out, and I'll spray, it, and then like I'll scratch it behind its ear, and it'll love that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. This looks like that, but bigger. Yeah, you have like a feather to tickle them. Yep, yep, and like you can throw a ball, and you can watch that little uh, electric corgi like They're chase after so it. You can see cute. his cute little it's butt. It's all so cute. Yep. Also, curry with rice? 
This is feature number three. Uh, there are there's a cooking mini game in here. There's a whole curry decks. Yes, curry decks. Mark curry decks. Um, more than a hundred curries that you can make depending on the ingredients. Mm-hmm. Um, it does something or it doesn't, and who cares? <laughs> frankly, I want to make dinner for my adorable Pokemon as we camp out in the wildlands. They also showed showed off some new Pokemon, including Poltegeist. Mm-hmm. Who uh, hides among tableware and kitchenware? Yeah. So is shown in like a cracked teapot. Yeah. Like it, he, like he's a little teapot, short and stout. Well, he's like um, a uh, what do you call it? Like hermit crab mm-hmm. of tea. Right. Who will also let trainers that it trusts taste its tea. <laughs> it gets confusing. It gets confusing, but fun. It's a ghost type. And then we also got this really, really stupid bird-looking one. Oh, my God. It looks... I mean, all bird Pokemon look dumb. But but this one... Especially, it should be embarrassed to be alive. (laughs) It's a flying water type. Mm -hmm. Um, Its special move is, like, it it can do this tidal wave attack. Well, hold on. Its name is Cramorant. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Need we say more, but we shall. Um, It can do this tidal wave attack, and then... If it is attacked afterward, it, then it has like a fish stuck in its gullet. Right. And then if it's attacked afterwards, it can counterattack by, by spitting the fish. So stupid. We got a fish spitter in here, Mark. Maybe my new favorite Pokemon. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, both of these guys are great. Pulte guys. Why are you giving a Sobble? Yeah. When Cramorant is right here for the taking. Oh, man. I can't wait for like Sobble to try and like hide in the water and Cramorant to accidentally eat him. That's what I can't wait for. Pokemon Sword and Shield, of course, comes out on November 15th, 2019. Um, so earlier I said Megaton announcement, referring to the fact that they're still going to put more <laughs> characters in Smash Brothers after the fifth one. Um, but this is the real Megaton announcement, right? You know, we kind of knew it was coming. Yeah. But I feel like it would have been a real surprise if the... I mean, this whole Direct kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. It didn't have the like drumbeat of expectation that some of these Directs do. But if it weren't for that, the patent leak yes. that it happened a few months ago, or probably just a few weeks ago, then the SNES games, the Super Nintendo games coming to Nintendo Switch Online would have been a real surprise. That's right. It was announced, and it's available tomorrow, which means today, uh, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System Nintendo Switch Online. And I cannot tell you... Okay, so I was super excited for that. Mm-hmm. But the part that I was really, really happy for is they were like, and do you know what? Here's the 20 games we're launching with. Yeah. And they're kind of awesome. Yeah. So um, the uh, 20 games that, that are launching with it. Here we go. I'm just going to fire through them. Brawl Brothers, Breath of Fire, Demon's Crest, F-Zero, Joe and Mac 2, Lost in the Tropics, Kirby's Dream Course, Kirby's Dream Land 3, Pilot Wings, Star Fox, Stunt Race FX, yes. Super EDF Earth Defense Force, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, Super Metroid, Super Puyo Puyo 2, a game that's never come to the States, <laughs> Super Soccer, Super Tennis, and The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. I love this. I love that it's a mix of, like, the stalwarts that you would expect to be here. Mario World, Zelda, Metroid, Yoshi's Island. But it's also games that weren't on the SNES Classic Edition. Breath of Fire, Demon's Crest, uh, Kirby's Dream Land 3, Stunt Race FX. Stunt Race FX. So this was a... I played this game way more than like Super Mario Kart. Oh, yeah? Um, Because it was one of the first Super Nintendo games we owned. I played with my siblings so much. I am so excited. For this game to be on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, it is one of the few uh, Super Nintendo games that use the FX chip uh, made famous by uh, Star Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they mentioned in the Direct that this is the first time Stunt Race FX is going to appear on a system other than its original Super Nintendo. So, like, they are, you know, obviously there are a lot of holes in this. And there are, you know, so many other, like, amazing... There's, there are no uh, Square Enix games on here, for example. Um, no Final Fantasies, no Chrono Trigger. Um, but, like... They they are they're doing this right. Like there there are some cool oddities and like some Stone Cold classics in here. Also, it comes with all the stuff you expect from the uh, very similar to like the NES Online 
where you can play them online. Mm -hmm. You there's can play a them with like feature. friends and mm -hmm. like in multiplayer. But there's a rewind feature which does not exist in the uh, NES Switch Online unless they added it recently. They added it oh, recently. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, but it's going to be available um, at launch, and they uh, assured us that uh, they will be adding more Super Nintendo games in the future. Um, and then uh, we got a little bit more information about the controllers. Um, so they are the the Super Nintendo controllers that we saw patented earlier. Um, they are not like wacky Joy Cons that slide on to the side of your Switch and look like big weird ears on them. Right, like the NES controllers were. That's right. Um, these are just standalone alone um super nintendo controllers that uh charge and connect uh by a normal usb-c um cable uh and they can be ordered the basically the same way that you could order the nes ones uh if you have a nintendo switch online account um you can go to nintendo's website and order them uh and they are 29.99 yeah so instead of being sold in a pair like the nes ones were you just buy them individually. And I haven't checked to look if you can buy more than one or what the deal is. Yes. So uh, they they begin shipping them on September 18th. Oh, and wow. you are limited to four per customer. So um, that's more than you'll need. Uh, you can definitely buy the two of them that you uh, may may ever want. I think I'll just get one. Yeah, I think so too. It's I mean, it's about this point that I was feeling some ex like anxiety about the amount of games to play. Right, because 20 just got <laughs> dropped in your right. lap. 20 that I, like, want to play a lot of these. Okay, you are not going to play super soccer. No, that's fine. 19. Super tennis. 18. Uh, Joe and Mac, you're not going to play. <laughs> like, Breath of Fire, that's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, again, I love my SNES Classic Edition, but to be able to play these in handheld, away from the TV, yeah. that is, like, the dream SNES experience. Yeah, I'm I mean, so excited. One of the games that I have played the most on my 3DS is Super Mario World. So like, it's a perennial. Yeah, it's it's just a perfect game. And will I play it again? <laughs> yeah. I mean, also the first time that we're getting like a really potentially solid port of Super Mario World Two on handheld. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because normally, um, the uh the version of it that gets kind of passed around is the uh, Game Boy Advance version, um, which doesn't have the FX chip in it, so it doesn't like and the like touch the fuzzy music gets is different busy. and all. Yeah, that there's a stuff. lot of stuff that's not quite right. Then we got more Tetris 99 news. Oh my god, I'm so happy about this Tetris 99 news. <laughs> so there's a free update uh -huh. and more paid DLC, right? Well, all coming today. So the more paid DLC is the second half of the DLC that. Oh, I've already paid for it. You've already. Oh, paid what for a it. relief! Yeah. Oh my uh, gosh. Plop plop fizz fizz. <laughs> Uh, so the the updates include a Tetris Invictus mode, which is the exact same uh, game, except it's only accessible to people who have achieved Tetris Maximus. So you have to have a, gotten at least one first place victory. Which, great. Get those people out of there. Give me a shot. I am nervous about going into Tetris Invictus. Um, Sarah and I have scored over 50 victories at this point. Um together um and uh i just i know that we're good at it i don't know that we're invictus good um there there were also daily missions announced uh which you do uh, they didn't really give any examples of what these things are um but you do them and then you get tickets which can be exchanged for special themes uh prior to this themes were only available uh competing in the tetris maximus cups um and then there are a bunch of new uh player icons to collect they started to like scroll through them and it's like, oh great, there's like a hundred. <laughs> I'm gonna be collecting these things forever. Um, and then there's a two-player share battle, uh, which looks like the two of you get to play uh, on one screen against uh, like 90 97 seven. other. Yep. Um, and then a local arena where you can just uh, have people playing locally uh, in a tournament together. Man, Tetris 99 is the gift that keeps on giving. It's great. Um, and then. All of this comes on if you buy the physical version? Uh, yes. I Including think so. the DLC? I think so, yeah. Plus 12 months of Nintendo Switch Online. Not a bad deal. Um, Mar then a little bit about Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. Nothing really we hadn't talked about previously with like the retro characters. With the exception of the story mode, oh my God. where the characters get sucked into a video game version of the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. Because why not? Sure. Great. 
I'm not going to play this anyways. Nope. Can't wait for the videos. Hey, speaking of uh, not going to play this anyways, can't wait for the videos. Damon X Machina they're, comes out next week. I am not the target audience for this. Right. But it really feels like they're trying. They have a prologue demo, which you can download now. It carries over all of your progress into the main game. I just can't believe how like soon this comes out. Yeah, it seems a little bit weird, right? Like there, there was that uh, that demo from a few months ago uh, that they were then like soliciting feedback on, um, and I know we were both like, uh, I don't know, it's like overwhelming. It's both too slow and too fast at the same time, and like the uh, like story beats were really weird. Um, and uh, then they went quiet, and now the game's coming out. Yeah, I I mean to me it's like okay, you have Astral Train, you have this, then like. A week after you have um, Zelda. Zelda, and then a week after that, you have Dragon Quest Eleven. But what do I know? Because, you know, uh, Fire Emblem and Marvel were released. Yeah, a you know, week it, apart. It just seems yeah. like these are totally different audiences, which is awesome. You know, there are, like, so many different types of games on Switch now. Yeah, I mean, it is crazy that you just look at, like, every every week from, like, mid-July until the end of the year, and there's something cool coming out on uh switch including star wars jedi knight 2 jedi outcast who saw this coming N- not me yeah not me either it's the full single player experience um so you won't get your multiplayer jedi knight 2 ex- <laughs> experience on on switch this comes out uh september 24th for a minute i thought they were going to announce a shadows of the empire oh remake God. or remaster that would be wild they didn't. Um, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition. Again, they were just kind of like, it's all here October 15th. Mm-hmm. And then the aforementioned uh, Assassin's Creed Rebel Collection, which collects uh, Black Flag and Rogue um, and all the single player DLC uh, that those games had. Also including um, tilt and touch controls uh, in some capacity that they didn't elaborate on. That comes out December 6, 2019. So happy birthday to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Dauntless is coming soon. This is kind of like the free to play. It is free a to start yeah, it's Monster Hunter type game. That's right. And it, it's got a little bit of like a Fortnite-ish visual style. It looks like they, to me, it looks like they were like, Fortnite's popular, uh, Monster Hunter's popular. Let's make a game that's those two things. That's how money's made, babies. Yep. Uh, uh, Oh, no, go ahead, because I was just going to say Sizzle Reel time. It is time for a Sizzle Reel. Here are the games that we see on the Sizzle Reel. Just Dance 2020, Grid Autosport, Farming Simulator 20, Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, NBA 2K20, Call of Cthulhu, Outer Worlds, Devil May Cry 2, and Vampire. So we don't have a specific release date for Outer Worlds yet. That That's probably the one I'm most excited for. I wonder if it is planned to come later this year. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not but I'm I guess not, they showed uh, off a bunch of 2020 games as well, so who knows? Uh, Vampire, I've never played before, but it's supposed to be kind of like a seminal game in like s- RPG storytelling. Okay. So I'm curious about it. Again, I don't know that I feel so overwhelmed. I don't know that I'll actually have time to play it. Yeah, but I mean, at end of uh, end of October is when that one's coming out. I'm a little bit interested in uh, Nino Kuni. Uh, that's a game that I always wanted to play when it was on PlayStation and just never got around to it. It's coming out the same day as uh, Link's Awakening, so like I don't, I ju- well, that's just not going to happen. Uh, and then we got a little video about Animal Crossing: New Horizons. Yes, um, I'm v- really excited for this game. I think it looks super cute. I-, I don't really have anything new to say about it. They didn't really show off anything particularly new. It seemed like a highlight reel from what we saw at E3. Yeah, I mean, it is really interesting that like they come off the sizzle reel and then they're like, now we're going to do Animal Crossing. And there's no way to show Animal Crossing that makes it look exciting, right? <laughs> it's not really an exciting game. No, it's, it's not. It's not meant to be. Like it would be. I don't know what we would do if we were like that was a heart racing. <laughs> you know, like what what it wouldn't be Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. Um, and like this game in particular, it's always been a slow game. Um, and this one, it's like you're going on vacation, and the whole like premise of the game is you are on vacation on a deserted island, uh, but you also make a life there. And friends. And friends. Um, yeah, uh, it, it looks super cute. I, it, like you said, I don't really know what else uh, there is to say about it. And then finally, the last thing they revealed. Oh, one more thing. Was Xenoblade Chronicles coming to Switch in 2020. 
Yes, so this is the definitive edition of the Wii game that came out in 2012, which was also re-released on the 3DS. Which is the genesis of Shulk. That's right. Uh, The genesis of both Shulk and Shirtless Shulk um, (laughs) from Smash. Uh, So uh, they must have seen a pretty good return on uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, right? I think that's for sure. It sold over a million copies. Yeah, which is pretty impressive for like a big weird jrpg like that super weird um i i also think it's interesting that xenoblade chronicles once this game comes out uh so there there are basically three and a half xenoblade uh games there's uh one two x and then the torn of the golden country um that three of these games are all going to be on switch right um just leaving the the wii u one uh x as uh, sort of the outlier. And I, I think the original Xenoblade Chronicles is uh, more beloved than It's, it's very well regarded, yeah. Um, I, again, I'm kind of only familiar with it from its soundtrack, which is legitimately amazing. Mm-hmm. So this is one I'm glad it's coming in 2020 because at least at this moment, I can feel hoped that I'm like, yes, I will have time to play this <laughs> when it comes out. Uh, yeah, so too many games. Uh, too many games. Let's throw away our switches. <laughs> We're done with them. Was there? Okay, so that was it. We've we've now been we've been through everything. Was there uh, any notable uh, omissions? Anything that you were expecting to see that you didn't see in this presentation? I think I was expecting to see uh, Super Mario 3D World and to be in the January spot that the um, yeah. Tokyo Mirage Sessions is coming mm-hmm. out, but. I don't know. I guess I still think that is looming at some point, maybe next year. Yeah, I mean, at at that point, I'm like, give me a sequel, man. Give me a sequel to Super Mario uh, 3D World. That game's so good. Um, I thought it was interesting that, well, we saw a couple Nintendo Switch lights um, throughout the course of the presentation. They didn't talk about it at all. Yeah. There's, it just, like, they they've seem to have a very like hands off approach to marketing um the new hardware here and i and want- i guess this isn't really the place for it yeah. either because these uh directs are so jam packed yes like even in 40 minutes it felt like a whirlwind yeah i mean what did we 800 games i mean it's it it's uh it, it's it's a lot already and to try and like throw on top of that like oh yeah and also New hardware. <laughs> right. But no, I uh I I really enjoyed this direct because it like we talked about earlier, it didn't have the like weight of expectations that some of these do. And there were a lot of surprises in there. You know, it, it probably wasn't for a lot of people, you know, Tokyo Mirage sessions and Xenoblade Chronicles is not or they're not, you know, like um barn burners necessarily, but I'm really excited to see Nintendo kind of bringing these games back onto the switch yeah i mean it's hard to match the excitement of like you know uh announcing a breath of the wild sequel or the Link's awakening remake or like super mario maker 2 like those are all the you know the last couple like big nintendo directs have had these like oh my god pull my you know jaw up off yeah. the floor uh moments and this was kind of more of like a a steady chug of like the current state of Nintendo right now, which is a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think we're be- we've kind of been so spoiled that we're taking for granted. We're so spoiled, like all of the. Oh my gosh, we're like, so spoiled. The, the, the promise of the Switch, right, was in the very beginning. We were like, oh yeah, like indie games are coming to it and some third parties, but it's gonna be like the Wii U, possibly where they're not gonna find a lot of success. Yeah, and I think two years in, two and a half years into the Switch's lifespan, we're really beginning to see. Like the fruits of that third party and indie game uh, relationship cultivation, where you're like, Overwatch is coming to Switch. That's crazy. That yeah. is crazy. And we're just kind of like, that is a footnote. We're more excited about Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Which, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's crazy on top of crazy on top of crazy. All right, Mark, let's uh, close out this discussion. Of course, that's just how we felt about this thing. I would love to know how everyone else is feeling. 
uh, about this Nintendo Direct. So if there was a game on here that we, uh, you know, were just breezing right past, maybe you're a big Deadly Premonition fan, um, and you want us to know about it, email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Um, and, uh, you know, also if you've got like a Super Nintendo games that you think should be on that uh, Super NES Nintendo Switch online, uh, let us know that too, because that is a, a fun thing to speculate on. Uh, man. <sighs> Sorry, I'm coming down from all of it now. Again, I've seen this thing three times. So, like, you know, my, my blood is coffee now. I think it's how that works. <laughs> You're basically Gooigi. <laughs> I am. Please don't eat me. Uh, all right. That's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. If you liked it, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. You can share this episode with your friends who are like, hey, what's this uh, Nintendo Direct thing about? You're like, brother, have I got an hour of other content for you to, <laughs> to take in. Um, share it. It helps us out tremendously. On Twitter, you can find us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell. And the show is at Nin Cart Society. You can check out the Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. We like to keep it easy for you. And don't you worry. A Nintendo Job Swap episode? That's coming up at some point. Oh, yeah. I can almost guarantee it's going to be so next week. don't get mad at Nintendo <laughs> for scheduling to direct before we could do our Nintendo job swap. Please, if you tweet at Nintendo, be polite. You feel free to voice your displeasure, but in a way that is civil and doesn't threaten anyone's, you know, children. Less directs, please. Please. Use the full word. None of this PLZ period nonsense. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape at Betty. To get more of his music, you can go to apebetty.com. <clears throat> I'll try that address again. 8bitbetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying thank you, Nintendo, for your directs. Please do more directs. And thank you for listening. Hey, Rachel, Oscar. Yeah, Claire? Claire? Do you love Disney movies? Uh Uh-huh. Have you seen them all? Not Not all all of them. them. What do you guys think if we watch them all in chronological order and then talk about them? Ooh. Oh, and what if we could talk about it with some of our favorite friends? (gasps) I love that. Yeah, what if we do it inside the Disney vault? You know, that's the name of our podcast, Inside the Disney Vault on Campfire Media. Yeah, check us out on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to yours. That's Inside the Disney Vault. Let's go. Campfire.